submissions on page 37 of the bundle in so far as 28 is concerned. For just a minute. <coughs> You're saying page? 37, my lord. 37, my lord. Page 37, yes. Thank you, my lord. But before I go there, my lord, I need to... Um, indicate something to the court. Yesterday I made submissions in so far as the issue of the diary that I choose number four. Yes, I remember. And uh, I also made submissions that there was a court order <coughs> in that regard. I also made a submission that uh, Mr. Alexander is aware of same. Yeah. I need to indicate, my lord, and put on the record that at the time of the application by choose number four <coughs> for the return of his diary, Mr. Alexander was not on the record <coughs> as yet. I made that, that assumption based, or rather I made that submission based on the following, that um, these requests for further particulars are as a result of the instructions <coughs> from accused number four. Therefore, accused number four was aware because he's the one <coughs> who brought the application in the High Court in the North Carolina for the return of his mm -hmm. diary. <coughs> and therefore, Actuate Number 4 was aware of the court order on his application. Just a minute. South Counting High Court. <coughs> Not Counting. No. North. No. In Pretoria. Okay. <coughs> yes. Therefore, my lord, if it, it is a choose number four instructions to bring these further particulars. I take it he brought it to Mr. Alexandra's attention that he did at some stage bring an application in the North Carolina High Court for the return of his diary, which application was dismissed. So I based <coughs> my submission on those grounds. Therefore, my lord, I beg leave now to come back to page 37. I just wanted to make that correction. <coughs> okay, thank you. <coughs> yes, page 37. The state is requested in terms of paragraph 28 of the request for further particulars in, in respect of accused 1, 2, 3, and 5 for the copies of the statements in the Santin case docket relating to the alleged murder of Pumlani where I choose one, two, three, and five are uh, choosed is requested hereby. The states 
for the blind there too can be found on page 45 wherein it, it is stated <coughs> same has already been disclosed to the accused <coughs> same also forms part of a separate case and or trial involving the accused and three others and the matter is sub to the care and set down for trial on 25 July 2016. <coughs> I need to indicate to the Lordship that as early as September of 2014, the Santin case docket was disclosed <coughs> to the accused And subsequent thereto, further disclosure was made <coughs> until the matter was set down for trial on, if my memory serves me well, 16 April 2015. <coughs> Between the period of September 2014, and April 2015. The accused before court <coughs> changed. Uh, when you say the accused before court, shall I take it you're referring to one, two, three, and five, or are you referring to all of them? All of them, are not. Okay, just a minute. <coughs> Right. In that matter, my lord, to just to put the court on the same page, there are eight accused, the five before court, and three others. During the appearances in this very same court, the accused changed their legal representatives which resulted that is the eight of them some of them are not, not all of them but mostly the, the ones before this court Same a lot resulted to the fact that the same request was made to the state. And the state provided same to the accused again. The matter could not start in April. It was adjourned till May of 2015, once again for trial. There was again change of legal rep representatives by the accused. Same request state obliged. Just a second. <coughs> the request that you're referring to uh, is, 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 the, is the request as contained in paragraph 28. That's correct, my lord. We, we are now in new, new representatives. We request yeah. <coughs> copies of the docket. Disclosure was then made. The state obliged. State obliged. Right, thank you. Meta could not start in May, but was then adjourned to July.
Once again. To July of which year? 2015. Right. Once again, there was a change of legal representatives. Is it now? Is it now happening for the third time? For the third time. The matter could not start, it was postponed to November. Of the same year. Of the same year, my lord. Right. The reasons for postponement is change of legal representatives. At this stage, the the accused who are not before you are the ones who now wanted legal aid. That would be the three. Two of the <coughs> three, Malot. Okay, just a minute. Once again, the state had to supply disclosure of the docket. Copies of? Copies of the docket. But I'm not talking about one or two Ashley files. It's nine of them. And so is it then the position that uh, at every instance when such a request was made, copies of nine of them were made? We did make copies, my lord. Yeah, no, no, of the nine, of the contents of the nine, uh, I believe. Files. Files. Yes, yes. And yeah. we, need, we need to indicate further, my lord, that <coughs> In all except for one instance, same was given for free to their trust, despite them having private counsel representing them. It is the any choose right to have the contents of the police docket disclosed to them. However, same cannot be just be exercised without any restriction or limitation. Further there to my lord. My lord was informed that there was counsel who represented their accused in this very same case prior to it being before you. And the, my lord was also informed that the state insisted that same council must appear before court and formally withdraw on the record. Same was advised by the actions of the accused as indicated above which led to the Santin matter not proceeding at all on four separate occasions. As we stand, 
Same council who withdrew in this matter is still on record in the sanction. So he still has the copies of the docket in the Santin matter because they represent the same accused before you, save for accused number four. It escapes me, therefore, that the same accused who are in possession of the docket in the sanction net which copies have been supplied more than once to them now come before you and request same Furthermore, same is not requested in a normal way of requesting a disclosure of the docket, but with the implementation of Section 87, hoping that this, this court will force the state to disclose same. What is worrying my lot is, and I've indicated this when I also uh, made submissions as far as Mr. Alexander is concerned. This court is not informed what happened to those courts. Just a minute. The court is not informed. Informed. What happened to those copies that have been disclosed before? <coughs> Further there to my lord. Section 87 is abused in the process. Because it is clear even from the request that we are dealing with the Bedford view matter, this is a sentient docket. Which docket relates to a murder? Just a minute. Which docket relates to a murder of one Pumlani? Which murder is a count against the accused? All In five. a separate all, all of them. five. All five. In a separate trial altogether. my lord I'm not sure whether you can in one trial employ the provisions of section 787 on a charge of another trial separate altogether to the one before you I'm not sure whether 
X section X seven extends in that regard. The request must be in respect of a particular charge, which upon which the accused is expected to plead, your lordship is not even in possession of the of the indictment in that case. It was not part of this proceedings. How can you be expected to rule on the Section 87 application on a charge which is not before you? And if your Lordship then orders that the state must provide this further particulars. I have to take all the nine Ashley file dockets and enter them into this record. And provide this court with the entire evidence. Totally, totally irrelevant to the charges before you. How can you make such an order? In all fairness, not only to the state, but to the accused themselves as well. Hence, I said right at the beginning of my submissions, the accused before court opted to make this request in terms of this section. So the court must make an order in terms of this section. Therefore, if the order is state, disclose those particulars. I have to disclose all the copies, nine actually were files thereof, and 87.2 says enter those particulars into the record. Why should we burden you, my lord, or this court, with nine actually were files of a matter totally irrelevant to the one present? Hence, my submission, my lord, is this is an abuse of Section 87. Hence, my reply on page 48, rather, 40, 40, five. Five, my lord, is the first response, the first part of same has already been disclosed to the accused. One. Part of the reply, same also forms part of a separate case and or trial involving the accused and three others. That's two. And three, the matter is subject. It's not part of this at all. I submit that this court will find it prudent or proper that the state cannot be ordered to finish <coughs> these particulars. Moreover, without any reasonable explanation, what happened to the copies that have already been disclosed? Twenty-nine and thirty, my lord, it was already been Circle between parties. Just a minute. <coughs> 
You said 29 and 30 is certain. It's certain, my lord. Um, it's, it, it is the bail, re bail records in the GMS team. Oh, um, that is what was to be attended to yesterday. Yes, that's correct, my lord. We're still waiting for the transcript to be provided. Yeah. And then um, 30 is in relation with the cell phone data, which CDs have been given to Mr. Alexandra, mm. who will in turn also provide same to Mr. Fanemero. That was the agreement between the parties. So between right, 9 fine. and 30 is, is settled. Settle. Yes. Just one one point, my lord, before I sit down, and so far as 28 is concerned, I see I made a note here that Mr. Mr. Van Merve did make submissions, and so far as 28 is concerned, that the Santin case docket relevance can only be determined mm -hmm. once the information becomes available. I just made that note here. Yeah, just a second. Now, there's, there's, there's difficulty in the submission. The accused before you have that information. The copies have been disclosed to them. It cannot therefore be said the relevancy thereof can only be determined once information becomes available. It is available. They have it. It is not sufficient to say this council does not have that information. It was disclosed to their choosed. It is their choose who is requesting this information, not cancer. It is their choose who have instructed cancer to request this information, not cancer. <coughs> which information, my lord, which is already in their possession? As indicated yesterday, the guiding question is whether the accused has a reasonable need <coughs> for further additional information. In so far as section 87 is concerned, what additional information if you already have that information? In summing up my submissions, my lord. My Lord will look at this whole bundle and my Lord will realize 5% if not less relates to the charges of the entire request. In all fairness to this court, in all fairness to the state, in all fairness to the accused, and also in all fairness to the administration of justice. If one interprets and understands the request here too, they don't form part of an application in terms of Section 87, but something else differently altogether. But they choose, chose to this route. Therefore, it's my submission and the state submission that there implies that to insofar as it relates to section 87 is sufficient. Unless there's anything else, my lord, those would be my submissions. <coughs> is it then my understanding that as you sum up, um, you are thereby imploring the court not to order the finishing of any of the requests. 
any better feather fertilizer yeah. because it's clear that those that there are, there are some of those that the state and the defense agreed that they'll, they'll be supplied there to we don't need the court to order on that no so those that are still in dispute I submit there's no need for the court to order the state for any further feather fertilizer uh, just a minute. Right. I think then, in, uh, in that way, uh, it will be important uh, for the court to specifically know exactly which ones those are, so that uh, the court doesn't unnecessarily uh, deal with those and possibly come with different rulings, um, particularly in light of the agreements that have been reached <coughs> by and between the parties. I understand. I, 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 want, I want to be particularly careful uh, because unless we do it in that way, the end result could very easily be that you have agreed. Then I come with something else as an order. I understand. And then you start wondering, but uh, was the court with us in the courtroom? I understand. My Lord, um, may I make the following suggestion? Mm. The applicants can indicate to the court in answering this cross question because they are the ones who have been listening to me yeah. they are the ones who are requesting this reply yeah. if they then say A, B, C, D is circled E, F, G, H is not then the court will be in a better position than, rather than that coming from my side I think yeah. it's better yeah. to yeah. be them in answering yeah. the cross question Yeah, I'll tell you what uh, you'll recall it must have been yesterday when I indicated that the number of uh, uh, them were settled and we moved together accordingly that's correct uh, there are those that I have indicated where we all are at them now with regard to the others for instance uh, this morning you referred to you remember the finishing of the um, uh, bail application record that's correct um, it may not necessarily be that and that alone uh, if there are instances where you find that that finds application, it will be very important for me to know that. Um, apart from uh, saying what you have just said, when you indicated that they, as they listened to you, uh, submitting as you did, uh, they could indicate as to which ones those are. But that could again very easily be sorted out uh, by the parties because then you can say, okay, right together, uh, let's just list that. One, two, three, four, it is this. We are in agreement. That assists uh, the court, you know. Understood. And uh, then, in that way, uh, we are best able to move a little faster. I agree. <coughs> I agree, my lord. Thank you. <coughs> as far as I don't know. As far as because all, all it takes, Mr. Van der is, um, uh, you know, you, you simply get together, and what you then do is, <coughs> you, you know, you, you have a list. You go through that together, you identify them, those that um, you agree on, and uh, those that you don't, so that uh, there is unanimity, and uh, then we don't have a problem, and even as I settle down to work, I know exactly what I must go for, and what I must not go for. Yes, my Lord, and before I reply, my suggesting that we sit together and draw up the list so that I do not reply to instances which doesn't need a reply. Yeah, no, no, I think... That will assist us a great deal. Um, I agree with you. I, I take it, uh, even your brothers uh, will be in full agreement. With you I'm you are? Member, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Right. We we'll request an, uh, an adjournment for, for that. That you have. Thank you. Right. Um, will, will I get an indication as soon as you're ready? Then, then let's play. I think it's proper we do it that way. But as soon as we are done, we'll right, fine. Problem. And I take it by so saying, you are saying you must retire to my chamber. Thank right. you. The court again. Typing what?
Which case is that? Which case is that? Oh, oh that one.
No, 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 you can reply, gentlemen, it's fine.
Yeah, let's, let's just, we'll hear from them.
suggest we start tomorrow? Mm -hmm. What have you done today? Look, you and I are going to Kempton Park first. I'll be brief. I'll be brief like Florence. If we are done today, then when we start to come to the I don't think that we will finish today. I didn't test the last question. Think about it. I'm going to consider it. Apply my mind. It sounds like you've got your brain. I want to think about it. I want to consider No, actually, I'm not. I'm, I'm just confirming it now. It looks like I'm not going to go. Because yeah, I have disa I've disagreed with what the way people want to do things. I don't think it's necessary. I'll tell you. I'll tell you now. Must we agree about how we go about now? Yes. Identify rules. That I don't require a ruling on. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are the same. And then we okay. I think it's the authority to manage the rules in the commission.
2021 to 20 and so we need more energy. We'll be ready by 11.30. Nani pele ya mbunga nufiwa ya chaka mkana Mwole wengi mbunga Vanmorgen, vanmorgen om vier. Want daar gaan eerst vier die daal wees. Ik zie hem daar wel. Thank you. 
Yay! Set aside, and then they have to pay the cost. They are. Whoever was filing the application. I'll answer the court. You copy too. I don't know. I I'm talking about my mom. 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 I'm talking about my I'm picking in so guys. <laughs> I think the pleasure is mine, my lord. But before I commence with the reply, <coughs> submissions. Uh, you want to properly inform me with regard to. Well, there are certain of the aspects in the request which we would not require your lordship to make a ruling. Yeah. Um, and I will deal with the request from paragraph one onwards. Um, if I may refer your Lordship to page 18 um. of <coughs> 
Um, you are going to be mentioning the paragraphs. Yes, I'm going to mention the paragraphs and the pages that they appear on. Good, that will be fine. Uh, <coughs> your Lordship would not be required to make a ruling in terms of the relevant legislation and case law in respect of paragraph 1.7 and 1.8. The reason for that, my Lord, is that we can see that it seems to be repetitive of what has been requested in paragraph 1.6. So that is the reason why we do not request you to make a ruling because it would basically be a repeat of a ruling in respect of a similar request relating <coughs> to specific acts, dates and times that this relevant accused acted. Mm. Similarly, my Lord, in respect of paragraph 2 of the request as contained on page 19, of the request <coughs> we do not need to make a ruling in that regard as there has been a reply as contained on page 40 of the reply to the request we do not require your lordship to make a finding in respect of paragraph 3.5 as contained on page 20 of the bundle before your lordship as same is also contained in the question <coughs> in paragraph 3.6 so that will be 3.5 and 3.6 no no for 3.6 we require an answer my lord. oh okay 3.5 it's settled it's not settled my lord it's it's just because there is a, re a repeat so oh okay so what <coughs> we say is we we do not need to 3.5 i needn't deal with because I, I need only deal with 3.6. Yes, indeed. Sir. Okay. <coughs> For the same reason, my lord. The death, I mean. Eh? <coughs> yeah, I had you when you um, made reference to 1.7 and 1.8 and you said it was a repetition, what exactly does it mean? Does it mean that 1.7 and 1.8 I, um, I, um, I disregard? You can disregard it. Man. The 1.7 and 1.8? Yes, my lord. Thank you, I'm happy. Right, then I deal with 3. Point f no, sorry, I deal with uh, 3.6 um, and disregard 3.5 because 3.6 Answers 3.5. Yes, indeed, right. sir, my lord. Thank you. <coughs> Similarly, my lord, you can disregard paragraph 5.1. Is it because it's settled? Not because it is settled, because it would a be repetition. a repetitive a repetition of okay. what is contained in 5.2. But we require a ruling on 5.2. Right. Then you can disregard uh, if you can just bear with me, my lord, I just you can disregard eight point one by virtue of the fact it's a repetition of what is contained in eight point three. So we require a ruling on eight point three. But you can disregard 8.1. And uh, what is the position with regard to 8.2? Uh, we require a ruling, my lord. Are we good? We require a ruling. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, that's okay. That may be. Then, in respect of 14.1, you can disregard 14.1 as it is repetitive of what follows in 
or 14.2 is repetitive, but we would require a ruling on 14.2. So I should deal with 14.2? Yes. Right, thanks. We do not need a ruling on paragraph, on question uh, contained in paragraph 15. Settled. As same has been settled and answered. Right, thank you. We do not, you can disregard paragraph 16. As paragraph 16 is basically repeated in paragraph 17, but we require a ruling on 17. You can disregard the request contained in paragraph 19 <coughs> as it, the same basically appears in paragraph 20. Similarly, the Lordship can disregard the request contained in paragraph 25.1 as it is repeated in paragraph 25.2 in more specific words and requests. Then deal with 25.2. All right. The Lordship. Just a second. Then deal with 25.2. Yes. <coughs> yes. Lordship need not make a ruling in respect of paragraph 29 and 30 Second. as they have become settled between the parties. <coughs> mm. On the basis that in as far as Paragraph 29 is concerned. The state has undertaken to give us the transcripts of the bail applications together with the exhibits contained therein. And that is the gemist in a bail application. That is indeed so, my lord. Paragraph 30, although I have not had sight of the document <coughs> as same was handed, or the disk containing same was handed to Mr. Alexander, uh, I confirm that the agreement between the parties is that this will be there, and if there's anything else that is not there, that uh, Colonel Gedinda has indicated that he will assist us to obtain some. Okay. So this, as, um, 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 uh, as you are stating, can, sorry, can safely be disregarded. Then, <coughs> my Lord, in respect of the second portion of count 1.1, or question 1.1, It is the question, how many conspirators were there? You would see that the question is basically asked in two parts. You will find it on page 17. That portion, the second portion of paragraph 1.1 can be disregarded and is abandoned. <coughs> can be disregarded. Disregarded. <coughs> Similarly, the request in paragraph 11 on page 28 
the second part thereof again relates to the number of conspirators that can also be disregarded as that question is then abandoned those are you know, as far as <coughs> I can make your lordships work easier I do not know if you want me to reply now or you want to Mr. Alexander first to draw your attention on matters not needing a reply on his behalf um, maybe before you do so uh, if we could get Mr. Alexander to come in and uh, do as you did, uh, then you can proceed to reply. As it please, I, I think that would be fine. Mr. Alexander, uh, do you have uh, anything else to add I'm going uh, to, to, to the settle the issues? I, I definitely do. <coughs> I've tried to simplify it. I'm going to deal with aspect by aspect. 1.1 1 .1. settled. 1.2 yes. settled. Right. 1.3 and 1.4 are not settled. Then, my Lord, from 1.5 to 1.8, should the state concede that it's unknown, we can consider it settled. Because we've been referred to. substantial summary of facts where we can glean but it's not p pertinently stated in the reply that it's unknown whereas in, in a lot of other portions contained in the reply it's stated as unknown so 1.5 through to 1.8 if, if, if it's conceded by the state or stated it's not even a concession you know it's not a concession of the it's probably a, con a confirmation it's if, if it's confirmed <coughs> that it's unknown it can be considered settled all right i think uh I think um, uh, Mr. Gava is uh, making a, making a, a move. mental note of that. <laughs> Let's uh, do so. Uh, Let's do so. Done. You, you agree? I agree. Basically, okay. that's, that's my argument. Thank you. Then 4.1.5. Uh, sorry, I'm at 1.9 now. I'm sorry, 1.5 <laughs> to 1 uh, to 1 1.8. Eight can be considered settled. settled as unknown. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> right. 1.9 and 1.10 settled. One point eleven ties up with five point seven. One point eleven ties up with 5.7 that's pertaining to the bail transcript the germston that i believe can be considered settled the state has undertaken to make same available <coughs> upon receipt thereof together with all the annexures and affidavits there too <coughs> right 1.12 and 1.13 are not settled 1.12 and 1.13 1.14, 1.15 settled. 1.14, 1.15 are settled. <coughs> 1.16 can be considered settled should the state indicate that it's unknown. And once again, that should be quite a simple one. I believe Mr. Galba, my learned friend, can indicate to us. 1.16. The way it's moving, I think it's it's moving properly. Mr. Gaba, I am looking at you. Yes, my lord, I'm just quickly checking something. Oh, please do. Uh, one point sixteen. One one point sixteen, yes. <laughs> Second one. Thank you. Sorry, my lord, I didn't hear that. It was such a whisper. Settle. <laughs> Settle. Really Settle. <laughs> Thank you, my lord. 1.17 uh, is not settled. 1.18 to 1.20 settled. 118, 119, and 120 are settled. Uh, 2.1 and 2.2 are settled. 
2.3, my lord, is not settled. 2.4 all the way through to 2.11. So that's 2.4 all the way to 2.11, my lord, can be considered settled. Uh, sorry. 2.4. Uh, that's 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, <coughs> 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, 2.10, and 2.11, my yeah. lord, can be considered settled. <coughs> Three point one, three point two, and three point three, not settled. My lord, three point one, three point two, three point three are not settled. Three point four, once again, can be considered settled if the state indicates that it's unknown. That's three point four. Three point four. Thank you. It's like being at an auction here, my lord. <laughs> I was, I, 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 I was just about to say, one for you, one for me. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Mr. Alexandra, while you are in this issue, my lord, actually on, on my reply in, in three point four says, refer to two point seven supra because I made a mistake there. Then you will know that it's presently unknown. <coughs> well, it's, it's considered yeah. settled. That's unknown, which is the correct answer. Three point four. Yes, yes 3.4. 3 Correct. Thank so 3.5 settled. 3.6 <coughs> is not settled, my lord. 3.6. And then 4.1, 4.2. 4.3 and 4.4 can be settled, considered settled. I see that in 4.4 <coughs> my learned friend refers to 1.9 and in 1.9 it says unknown, which is the correct answer. So 4.1 to 4.4 settled, 4.5 uh, is... Uh, you're saying settled? Yes. You, you, didn't wa you didn't want to wait for... No, not at all. No, he's, he, uh, he's referred me to 1.9. I've had a look at 1.9. Oh, okay. Right. He, well, he's referred us to a lot of... <laughs> One point, but 1.9 indicates unknown. So 4.1, 2, 3, and 4 are settled. 4.5, my lord, is not settled. 4.5 is not settled. That is still in, in dispute. 4.6, we, my lord, I think we can consider it settled on, on the basis that the bail transcript is supplied. Because we refer to the bail transcript. So we'll right, can settled. Be settled on the basis of the bail transcription being Supplied. Right. There's likewise 4.7. 4.8 settled, my lord. 4.9, my lord, is not settled. And there I'm going to refer 4.9 and 4.11 because they tie up. 4.9 and 4.11 are not settled. They tie up. 4.10 settled. <coughs> Four point twelve and four point thirteen settled, my lord. Four point fourteen. This pertains to the Ford Ranger. Um, should the state confirm on record that it has never conducted tests on a Ford Ranger, it can be considered settled. That it has never conducted tests on a on a Ford Ranger, it can be considered settled. If we have that affirmation. My Lord, I will on this one, I will stand by my unsigned submissions on this one. <coughs> not settled. It's not settled because we, uh, my answer is this, that we never recover the Fort Ranger, so it stands there. <coughs> I'll address your Lordship in that in due course. <coughs> um, 4.15 and 16 are settled, my Lord. 15 and 16 are settled. 5.1 and 5.2, my lord, not settled. 5.3 and 5.4, my lord, can be considered settled. <coughs> 5.4. 
5.5 can be considered settled. I viewed the photographs which referred to the exhibit file this morning in court. My learned friend was kind enough. They didn't have the docket here yesterday, but he brought it with this morning. I viewed it, so it can be considered settled. So that's 5.5, my lord. Right, thank you. 5.6, my lord. Not settled. 5.7, my lord. Settled. And then 6.1 and 6.2, not settled. We require a Again, to require a ruling from your lordship in that, so it's 6-1 and 6-2. I'm indebted. Are that's you done? That's everything. Oh, right. everything. Fine. My air is very short. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, just, just a second, sorry. You, you would have had every reason to fight. No, I was saying I'm requesting a very brief adjournment. Oh, did yeah. you say, okay, I thought you wanted to, f to no, see no, no, me. No, no, no. No, that's fine. Um, we are again. Yeah, my lord can wait on outside. Brief, oh. very brief. No, it's not a problem. The good idea. All right.
I'm indebted to you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first, um, I uh, I need to thank all three of you uh, because it is very clear uh, from the information that you have given me uh, that quite a number of issues you have attended to, and this is indicative of the fact that indeed uh, we are getting there. I thank all of you. <coughs> Messe fundamentally, it's your turn. Thank you, my lord. My lord, although one would try not to repeat what was previously, sa previously said, a couple of aspects that I think that I need once again to bring to your lordship's attention. My learned colleague has indicated that in a request for further particulars that an accused who says that I base my request on the provisions of section 87 would be limited to only that what is contained in the charge. He has on numerous occasions referred to what is contained in the charge. But may I be permitted in just to read what the sections say. Okay, yes, it is. <coughs> you may. <coughs> An accused may at any stage before any evidence in respect of any particular charge has been laid in writing request further to furnish particulars or further particulars of any matter alleged in that charge, any matter alleged in that charge, and the court before which a charge is pending may at any time before evidence in respect has been let direct that particulars or further particulars be delivered to the accused of any matter alleged in the charge. Now, my Lord, what is alleged <coughs> in a charge? For example, read count one in the indictment. Yeah, may I first be with you? <coughs> yes. In that during the period July to September 2013. My Lord, that is a date that has been alleged. <coughs> you would note from the request that particularity regarding the dates are requested. That is something which is alleged. That is a matter alleged in the charge. The accused can and should never be prohibited then to request further particularity as we have done relating to this bold statement. The reasons, therefore, I will return to at the end of my address to your Lordship. Then it continues to say, and at or near Bedford View and other places presently unknown to the state. What is alleged in that portion, my Lord? Locality.
what is requested? Precise locality. Is that not a further particular sought on a matter alleged in the charge? Then it goes on to say the accused unlawfully and intentionally conspired amongst themselves and others. What is the alleged matter in that portion, my Lord? That there was an act, that the accused acted. So what do we ask in the request for further particulars? How did they act? Did they act only by themselves? <coughs> Did they act with others? Do you know who the others are? I'll come back to that now. Etc. That is a matter alleged in the charge <coughs> and which we submit. There is no preclusion as submitted by my learned friend that the accused can ask these questions. This is not an abuse, as he wanted the court to believe. This is indeed the vehicle that must be utilized to obtain that information. Now, my Lord, he states, with others presently unknown to the state, and then he mentioned three <coughs> different possible acts by any of the four accused that I represent. They either <coughs> aided Or they procured the commission or that they committed, conspired to commit. So there are three different conspiracies or three different interpretations. We merely request, if your Lordship have regard, then to the request in paragraph 1 are there others involved there is a reply there too yes there are others involved it's not something that we require a ruling on there is an answer but my lord I have regard to the purpose of section 87 that the purpose or one of the purposes is indeed to make sure that there is not smoke and mirrors. It does not bring about confusion, but brings about clarity. Now, <coughs> before I go on with that aspect, the Lordship was referred to the provisions of section 87, subsection 3. Which allows <coughs> your Lordship to have cognizance of what is contained in the summary of substantial facts to the indictment. Seemingly, the argument of my learned colleague is that the defense is not entitled to have cognizance of what is contained therein and to get clarity in respect of certain aspects contained in the summary of substantial facts. Now, once Just again, a minute. <coughs> <coughs> I 
are you saying it seems that the state's view is that the accused uh, are not entitled to have regard to the summary? Well, they're not they indicated that we're not entitled to ask questions about it. But my lord, that's a summary of substantial facts are the very matter, the very matter referred to in section 87.1. I once again want to any matter alleged in the charge. This is the matter. This is the detail of the matter. And this is where we come and say that detail is not sufficient. Uh, is it a detail or is it a summary? Well, it's a summary, man. It's an opinion. Can, can I... No, no, I no, no. The yes. reason I ask is, uh, you are saying... Well, maybe my... You are saying it's a detail. Now, if you say it's a detail, I, I, I'm asking you because well, the, you the head is summary of substantial facts. That cannot be no, detailed. Uh, it's not, not... Let me rephrase it, my lord. Then, <coughs> uh, concise compression of facts. And... That is the matter indirectly referred to in the charge. Now, if we have regard to count one, the accused conspired among themselves and others unknown to the state to aid we ask the question did they aid or did they procure the commission of the offence or did they conspire to commit the offence which one of the three did they do because with the greatest of respect A general indication to state the four of you the four of you together with accused number five did either all three things, one of the three things does not bring about an opportunity for the accused to properly prepare and to put their defense before the court. My Lord, we have further heard that right in the beginning when reference was made to the seniority of the legal practitioners before you, that your lordship should have regard to the heading of the specific requests. And it's indeed so. The request on behalf of accused number 1, 2, 3 and 5 reads that it is a request for further <coughs> particulars in terms of section 87 of the court. But process, my lord, in the courts, and your lordship is well aware thereof, is indeed so that these particulars sought are generally sought in a request for further particulars. If the accused is to be bound by a heading of a specific document, I wish to refer you, Lordship, what was said as far back as in 1956. Yes, sir. The state's contention, as I understood it, was that you should not have regard to any of the aspects which does not simply strictly <coughs> fall within the ambit of section 87 and you should disregard same. Can I read to you what Shriner J.A. said in the matter of trans-African insurance? 
Company Limited versus Maluleka. And it's contained in the South African Law Reports. This 1956, the second volume, reported on page 273. <coughs> and I wish to read to your Lordship what is stated against paragraph F on page 278. He says, no doubt parties and their legal advisors should not be encouraged to become slack in the observance of the rules, which are important element in the machinery of the administration of justice. But on the other hand, technical objections to less than perfect procedural steps should not be permitted in the absence of prejudice to interfere with the expeditious and, if possible, inexpensive decision of cases on their real merits. My Lord, <coughs> may I ask you this? With, with regard to that observation, um, what exactly is the concern? Pardon, my Lord? With regard to the observation uh, made by, <coughs> sorry, Mr. Gava, what exactly is the concern <coughs> from your side? The concern is, my Lord, that and it specifically relates to the questions asked in paragraph 27 and paragraph 28 of the request of further particulars that your lordship may find that these are not matters relating to the charge 27 and 28 then we submit that having regard to what I've just read to your lordship that your lordship with inherent jurisdiction you are not a creature of statute you've got inherent jurisdiction you can say Mr. Van der should ideally have filed a letter to say I want copies thereof and then went on to bring an application uh, in terms of PIA or whatever other route that takes three years to finish uh, should have been followed. All we want to do is we want the matter to start and we want justice for the accused. So that's all. So we say you should not disregard that aspect. Uh, there is a further problem that the state sits with with that contention, my Lord, and you will find that in the request of Mr. Alexander. Because of these contentions that I've made, that, of that Mr. Carver has made, stating that we are strictly restricted to the charge because of the fact that it is an 87 application my lord and because it's contained in two parallel lines across the page for accused 1, 2, 3 and 5 your lordship would find that for accused number 4 there is a request for additional disclosure it is not only a request in terms of section 87 so there is no real abuse, my lord. There is absolutely no abuse. And you would find from the answers <coughs> that not once. Um, are you then saying that um, don't mind the heading? Is that oh, that's what, what I said, my lord. Is that, is that what you are communicating to the court? I'm, I'm saying uh, I have regard to the heading. That's mm. a request. But not, as far as the heading may prejudice the accused, also I have regard to the fact that process and what I've stated in here dictates that practicality should prevail. So, is he entitled by virtue of the provisions of 87? Will it help him to place the defense before the court? Is it needed to place his defense before the court? And I will come back to that later. Mm -hmm. So, Your Lordship, has to have regard to what my learned colleague on behalf of the state has stated. He stated he started with section 87 and he then went back to section 84 and 85 and 86. But my lord, 
these things are actually in a chronological order in the act for a purpose it's 84 if you're not happy you can object state can then amend and then we come to the stage of further particulars now further particulars can have a dual purpose The one is that there is no conformation in terms of section 84 and therefore needs further clarity. The other one is the one that we are dealing with. This is what stated in all case law. Can I just reiterate it? What was said in the matter of Cooper and others and the state 1976 reported in the second volume of the South African Law Reports on page 875 and more specifically against page 8, 8, 885 against paragraph A H the object of asking paragraph? for H my Lord, right <coughs> at the bottom of the page yeah, right. The object of asking for further particulars is to enable the accused to know the case which is proposed to be made against him and thus enable him to prepare his defense. That is thus then not sufficient, my Lord. We submit to advance to your Lordship, as my learned colleague on behalf of the State did, that because the essentialia of the charges as required by section 84 is contained <coughs> in count 1 through to count 9 brings about that there is no need for further particulars to be requested What I've stated to your Lordship regarding the other purpose is also stated in the matter of State versus Adams. It's a 59 1 decision. I have referred your Lordship to it previously. <laughs> it's reported in the South African Law Reports on 1959, the first volume, on page 646. And it was in a special criminal court in Pretoria. And your Lordship would note that one of the judges there was the late Chief Justice Rumpf. On page 656 of that judgment, it stated once again, it's a well-known principle. Against? Page 656, paragraph F, my Lord. Right. It is a well-known principle in our law that an accused person is entitled to such particulars as he properly requires for the purpose of preparing his case before he is called upon to plead and enter upon his defense. My Lord, the court then carries on and he is entitled to such particulars even if it, it entails a disclosure of the Crown's evidence. And I specifically place emphasis on that, and I'll come back to Cooper, who states basically the same. <coughs> because seemingly, there seems to be a conception that if I'm going to leak evidence, which is going to answer these questions, you are not entitled to it at this stage. Nothing can be further removed from the truth than that, my Lord. Is if you have, as we have here, nine counts, a summary of facts, <coughs> and a case docket. Now, much is said about the case docket and referral to certain statements in the case docket. My Lord, to simply state it is there, 
the submit is not good enough. If it is there, take the extraction from what is stated in there and answer it. But we don't get it. Inferences made says, look at A77. If it is there, uh, just a second. Because the are, are you are you then saying if it is there, take me there? Is that what you're saying? Well, but not, oh, let's. We are we have been dealing with hypoth hypothetical scenarios. Yeah, no, no. I'm but, with you before you before you uh, proceed. I'm yes. with you. I, I'm not. What I'm asking. What I'm asking is, um, are you saying? If the amendment is, it is there, take me there, is that yes. what you're saying? Well, repeat it in your reply. You don't have to say to me, look at paragraph 2, line number 2. Read it and answer it. Because when I read it, I simply could not get any reply <coughs> now my lord we know that cases has to be dealt with each on its own merits because each case is unique that, that we know but surely there were some directives, and those directives are contained in case law as to how certain aspects must be dealt with. Now, we know that in Cooper's case, against paragraph 886D, the court has said each case must be dealt with on its own merits. And I will get back to that right at the end <coughs> of my submissions to your Lordship again. My learned colleague has indicated that in the event <coughs> that these charges conform to the provisions of section 84, then this, applica excuse me, this application, these words were doomed to fail. I may have agreed with him, my lord. It was an application that we brought to your lordship to say oh, there's an objection to the charge because it doesn't conform with particularity as required by section 84. But this is not the application before you. The application before you is direct the state to over and above the information provided to give further particularity so that clarity is there, confusion is taken out of the equation. My learned colleague has advanced the submission that in the event that the relevant counts conform to the requirements of section 84 that that is the test that you should apply that is not the test my lord with the greatest of respect if I may again refer you to Cooper what was said on page 886B against paragraph B <coughs> the 
you just be with me, my lord? I've lost my train of thought here. No, that's all right. So, my lord, if I can go back to page 885 at the bottom, paragraph H, and I will carry on, on to 886. The object of asking for further particulars is to enable the accused to know the case which is proposed to be made against him and thus enable him to prepare his defense. He then refers to R versus Mokwezi, which is a 1943 appellate division case reported on page 622 and the, the referral is in respect of page 627 of the Mokwezi case. Then continues, the pr prosecution must therefore furnish particulars of the relevant or material facts which is proves, pr pr proposed to prove but is under no obligation to disclose its evidence by which it's proposed to prove the facts. That we agree. We don't ask for evidence how you're going to prove it. We ask what are you going to prove. It, um, just a second. You said 1943 AD, what is the page? 622 at yeah. page 627. That's what I want. Yes. <coughs> My Lord, on your copy that my learned colleague has provided yourself with, that's on page 11 of the 16 printed pages. Page 11 of 16. Yes, my Lord. That's fine. That's learned judge then carries on. <coughs> the care must therefore be exercised not to confuse particulars which may be essential to inform the accused fairly and reasonably of the case. He has to meet with the evidence which may be tended to prove the commission of the offence. This was actually quoted yesterday by my learned colleague. Exactly that passage was quoted to you, Lordship. I don't know if you want me to read it again. Oh, no, because, that's okay. no. because what follows is what's of importance. There may, however, be cases where the obligation to furnish particulars of relevant and material facts may necessarily involve the disclosure of evidence. Such particulars must not nevertheless be furnished. Now, my Lord, That <coughs> is the purpose of Section 87. <coughs> My learned colleague has then indicated to your Lordship that notwithstanding all the case law that I have mentioned in my initial application and addressed to your Lordship, that you should now have regard to the post-constitutional era, which seemingly differs from a time when people had less rights before the Constitution. My Lord, I'm, I'm not sure as to how to interpret the mere fact that a person is now entitled to a copy of what is contained in the police docket can simply take away the rights which has been inferred upon accused through the years to simply state you have my and I say entire in inverted commas case docket therefore I go, don't give you anything more that my lord has never being the object of the Shabalala matter.
where the blanket privilege of dockets have been taken away. I will refer you to Lordship later to a matter of King versus Director of Public Prosecutions where there is reference made what Chief Justice Mohammed said at that stage regarding Section 87. What if you are faced with a docket that has been supplied that contains no particularity? To simply come and say, look at the statement, and this is a matter of evidence, that is not enough. I've indicated to your Lordship that there are instances where evidence must be disclosed. It's not, you cannot hide behind, if I ask you, what did each of the accused do? To simply come and state <coughs> that is a matter for evidence. You cannot do that. Because if that is not in the statement supplied, because we have heard about the Erasmus statement, and I'll get back to that now, now the Erasmus judgment. If the docket does not contain the particularity that enables the accused to properly prepare his defense. Where must he get it? So, it is not a question where we have an allegation that same is unknown to the state. It is a response that says this is a matter for evidence and you can look at I will take you through those spe specific responses at the later stage it then gets qualified by one or other way that it can only be described as being ambiguous it's a matter for evidence therefore I'm not going to give it to you look at the statements because it's in there but I'm not going to extract it and give it to you but he doesn't specifically state it's in the statements. He says, I refer you to the statement. What must I do when I'm referred to the statement? I have been referred to the statement. I couldn't understand what actions are attributed to the relevant accused. And just for good measure, I refer you to A1 and A2 of the Summary of Substantial Facts, just to confuse you a bit further. So what is the reply now? I don't know it, because A1 and A2 says yeah, it's unknown. And whilst I'm at that juncture, my Lord, you would note that there is a constant <coughs> referral to presently unknown. What does that entail? What does that mean? I do not know now because I have forgotten. I do not know now because nobody has disclosed it to me. I do not know now, but when I consult with my witness, he's going to tell me. So my Lord, with the greatest of respect, what is sought in the request for further particulars?
My learned colleague has advanced the submission to you that if you take the bundle for the request for further particulars, that only 5% of that whole bundle relates to your request in terms of the provisions. of section 87. But my lord, at the beginning of my address, and I'm specifically just dealing with the requests on behalf of accused 1, 2, 3 and 5. At the beginning of my address, I have shown your lordship as to what are matters alleged in a charge sheet or in the count. State, action, mens rea, all the necessary allegations as provided for but those are matters alleged. What do we ask? There is an allegation, if I can go specifically to count one. There is an allegation in count one. When the charge sheet was drawn, the indictment was drawn. That the accused unlawfully and intentionally conspired amongst themselves and with others presently unknown to the state to aid. Then I ask, that's a matter relating. Do you have the identities? What is the answer, my Lord? The answer is yes, we have. But I'm not going to give it to you. The advancement in submissions is, I'm not giving it to you because they're going to run away. But my Lord, with the greatest of respect, what does the charge sheet say? Are these two actually, can they exist next to each other? Just be with my word. <coughs> my Lord, you would note in the reply on page 38 to that specific question. He discloses... And what is the question paragraph? Paragraph 1.2, are any of their identities known to the state? <coughs> and then in 1.3, I ask if so, the identities of these persons and the extent of their involvement <coughs> in the conspiracy are requested. That is what we ask and then we get a response. Dennis Kretscher, some to accused for and others who this identity the state prefers not to disclose as indicated in the reply to 1.1 Supra. I'll come back to the manner of answering as well at a later stage. 1.1, he says, there are others involved. The investigations in order into others are at advanced and sensitive stage. To disclose at this stage as to the number and identity of those will jeopardize the investigations there too. I know the wheels of justice turn slowly, my lord. But may I refer you to the dates mentioned in the count, July to September 2013. It's a nearly a three-year period. But the state <coughs> says... I'm not going to give you the identity. Because if I give you the identity, or the extent of the involvement, we were given the example of a deceased body being chopped up by a second hand car salesman or panel beater or something, then they would know that they are, that is the person that I'm talking about and they would run away.
Now, my Lord, it's three years later. <laughs> if there's an allegation that Tom, Dick, and Harry were co conspirators, then the accused can consult with Tom, Dick and Harry either to bring clarity about this whole very vague scenario where they were or at least to call them as a witness but the state say I'm not going to tell you I know it my charge she says I don't know it And therefore, I will not provide this particulars. Or I will provide the particulars, but I provide it as I deem fit to be provided. Is no. there an identification that you are referring to such that if known, uh, the idea is to consult with them to establish whether or not they can be made witnesses? Yes, is indeed. that what you're saying? Yes, my Lord, indeed. <coughs> I can consult, I'm giving you an example, if I consult with one of these identifiable or identified persons, you can see, yes, I was present on that day when one of the state witnesses were there. That never happened. But we know nothing. I have in front of me a three-month period with no particularity say so you can I'm talking about count one conspired to do either a B or C in respect of a murder of Mr. East that is what he must that is what he must respond to how do you respond to that so what do we ask we ask which one of these four conspired to aid or conspired to procure the commission of the offence. <coughs> that relates to conspiracy. Lord responds there to is look at paragraph A1 and A2 of the summary of substantial facts. My Lord, <coughs> this is the introduction as to state why the state relies on common purpose. I can't read it otherwise. There is absolutely no reference in those two paragraphs to give any differentiation between what actions are attributed to either of the four accused. As I've indicated, we know that one of the purposes is not to confuse, but to clear, my Lord, with the greatest of respect. It brings about greater confusion. Now, to get back to the Erasmus judgment, my learned colleague,
referred you to the unreported decision of the state versus Yu Cheng Chao and 18 others. And he has quoted certain passages from this specific judgment. My Lord, this judgment is clearly to be distinguished from what we are saddled with here today. In this judgment, my Lord, it relates to the supply of further particulars we the main counts were that of racketeering <coughs> they <coughs> they were hundred and sixteen counts relating to the contravention of poker <coughs> and my lord what has the state supplied the defense in this ma in this matter they supplied us with and I'm going to lay emphasis on that and I'll come back to that later <coughs> portions of the case docket <coughs> the indictment that's a second And that's that. Uh, when you say "and that's that," um, that's what we receive. Are you are you excluding or including the summary? Summary. I'm including. If I say indictment, including the summary, my lord. Sorry, my lord. There's something else then that I need to particularize we've also been supplied with a list of witnesses after the request for further particulars Mr. Alexander also received a disk pertaining to cell phone records which I have not seen and in fairness to the state, my lord, Mr. Alexander received three discs of one or depicting one or other scene which still remains in NF. Against that, my lord. If you have regard to page 2 and paragraph 3 of the judgment of Yu Chen Chao, now, my lord, just to reiterate, it related to racketeering activities. We all know to prove racketeering activities, you must prove. A series of offenses where people conspire to do the same thing and to have the same goal in mind very much like a conspiracy but in that instance
the accused have been supplied with the indictment together with schedules A, B, C and D A, B, C and D of uh, th those are schedules my lord which included the details of the alleged racketeering activities the details of the actions were supplied I'll come <coughs> back to that now in paragraph 3b of that judgment paragraph 3b yeah. It states they also received a preamble to counts one and two, <coughs> contextualizing the alleged acts committed by the accused. But more importantly, my lord. in this post-constitutional era they have received against paragraph C according to the judgment particulars related to the period date and place to each count 1 to 116 Now, if I may then take you at this juncture to what is stated in paragraph 56 of that judgment. <coughs> the court says, what I can gather now from this documentation and everything else that followed, I can see that... At this place, on this date, let count three, on 8 February 2006, at or near Foxhall Farm, Kulunov, Stellenbosch. Or count 52 to 98, on or about the dates mentioned in column two in schedule B, at near table by Harbour and at or near Hope by Harbour, as per the particulars described in columns three, four, and seven, as described in this. This is specifics, my lord. You were there on that date. You did that. One can defend that. But how do you defend <coughs> you, your co accused, others unknown, others known, whose names I refuse to give, or unknown, which, which we do not know which of the two it is. conspired to do one of three different things but I won't tell you which one of the three different things you individually did in furtherance of the conspiracy to murder someone my lord I see Mr. Alexander draws my attention that we have reached that stage yeah uh, it's in the lunch hour. We are joining for lunch. Our agreement still stands. Mm -hmm. Thank right. you. The court again. Mm